Baseball's Iron Man. Are we talking about a superhero that played baseball? In short, no. We're talking about a seemingly indestructible man who could not be stopped from going to work each day and performing his job at a high level. Over his career as a shortstop and third baseman for the Baltimore Orioles for 21 consecutive seasons, he piled up an amazing number of individual awards and led his team to many successful seasons. All of this success took place over the backdrop of his amazing record for the most consecutive games played in Major League history with 2,632 consecutive games. No doubt this is a staggering achievement in every sense of the word. Stay tuned as we dive into just how he was able to achieve these amazing feats. Ripken was born in Aberdeen, Maryland, and while it was a joyous day for all, his dad, Cal Ripken Sr., was not there to witness it. He was away with the Baltimore Orioles at the time. A baseball player at one time, Cal Sr. was also an Orioles coach, so it would only make sense if his son followed in his footsteps. Ripken's family was always on the move due to his dad's coaching role. From a young age, he was immersed in baseball, learning from pros like Doug DeCincis and soaking up advice from his own old man. By age three, he already knew he wanted to play ball, and by 10, he was a baseball whiz. Ripken would go on to attend Aberdeen High School alongside his brother Billy, and they both tore up the baseball field and even dabbled in soccer while in school. At that point, everyone knew Ripken was destined to be a baseball player. They just couldn't predict how far he'd go. His stellar academic record and athletic prowess caught the attention of numerous colleges and universities. However, Ripken remained steadfast in his ambition to become a Major League Baseball player. Although primarily scouted as a pitcher, Ripken's hometown Orioles had a different vision for him. They saw potential in him as an infielder, with the belief that he could always return to pitching if needed, and that was the beginning of a success story like no other. Indeed, the Orioles had big plans for Ripken back when he was drafted in 78. But in 81, they decided to shake things up midway through the season. So on August 7th, they called him up from Rochester, hoping he'd add some spark to the infield. Ripken's debut on August 10th was a nail-biter against the Royals. He dashed in as a pinch runner for Ken Singleton and scored the game-winning run off John Lowenstein's hit. Talk about making an entrance. Just six days later, he nabbed his first Major League hit against Dennis Lamp of the White Sox. But despite the thrill of his debut, Ripken struggled to find his groove, ending the season with a modest batting average and no extra base hits. But hey, every rookie has their ups and downs, right? Ripken wasn't about to let a rocky start hold him back. In 82, things started to click. He kicked off the season with a bang, smashing a homer in his first at-bat against the Royals. Sure, he hit a rough patch early on, but some sage advice from Reggie Jackson turned things around, and boy did they turn around. Ripken ended the season with a whopping 28 home runs and snagged the American League Rookie of the Year award that year. The Orioles were on fire, thanks in no small part to Ripken's heroics. But despite their best efforts, they fell short of the playoffs, leaving Ripken hungry for more action in the seasons to come. Honestly, no one was prepared for what this guy was bringing to the sport. He was only 21 years old when he broke into the team, and at 22, he had won the Rookie of the Year award, but he was only getting warmed up. Whenever the number eight jersey was on the field for the Orioles, everyone witnessed magic. Cal was a giant on the field, literally. At nearly six foot five inches, he towered over the competition. But what really set him apart wasn't just his size, it was his position. See, in the early 80s, shortstops were usually speedy contact hitters, but Ripken, he broke the mold. Now picture this, a hulking shortstop, smashing balls out of the park and snagging line drives with ease. It was a game changer, and Ripken's move to shortstop paved the way for future stars like Barry Larkin and Troy Tulowitzki. Then came 83, which was Ripken's breakout year. He was unstoppable, winning the AL MVP award and leading the league in hits that year. And it wasn't just about personal accolades. Ripken's offensive prowess powered the Orioles to an AL East division title. With 27 homers and over 100 RBIs, he was the heartbeat of the lineup. But something else that's equally amazing happened in 83. At that time, no one had ever won the Rookie of the Year and the MVP consecutively. The playoffs were a breeze for this champ and the O's, dispatching the White Sox in the ALCS before facing off against the Phillies in the World Series. Of course, led by legends like Mike Schmidt and Pete Rose, the Phillies were no pushovers, but Ripken wasn't about to let them steal his thunder. In just his second season, this man achieved what every player dreams of, a World Series championship. And he did it with style, solidifying his spot in baseball history. With Rookie of the Year, an MVP, and now a World Series ring under his belt by age 23, he was definitely already touching greatness. But Ripken wasn't just a slugger. 
He put in the work, studying hitters and honing his defensive skills. Even when the Orioles stumbled in the standings, the baseball virtuoso never faltered. Before the 1984 season kicked off, Ripken penned a groundbreaking deal with the Orioles. At about $1 million a year, it was the biggest contract ever handed out to a player his age, and boy did he live up to it. The all-star nods kept rolling in, but Ripken wasn't just riding the bench. He was tearing up the field. In 84, he clocked in with a 304 batting average, 27 homers, and 86 RBIs. Plus, while he missed out on a gold glove, he set an AL record with a whopping 583 assists. Definitely not bad for a kid from Aberdeen, Maryland. However, this star player streak almost hit a snag in 85, because spraining his ankle in a game against the Rangers, it looked like he might have to take a breather. But Ripken, he wasn't about to sit on the sidelines. So after a quick rest, he was back in action. The 86 season wasn't just about personal stats for Ripken, it was about carrying a struggling team. That year, despite the Orioles finishing last for the first time in ages, Ripken was the shining star. With a 17-game hitting streak and a 282 batting average, he was the glue holding the team together. Plus, with his dad taking over as manager in 87, Ripken would soon find himself in a historic lineup alongside his brother Billy. With his family surrounding him in the clubhouse, Ripken continued to pursue the record-breaking streak. For some context, you need to know just how incredible Ripken's streak was. His 2,632 game streak isn't just a record, it's a testament to strength and determination. There's Lou Gehrig with his legendary 2,130 game run, but after that, it's Ripken's world and we're just living in it. There's Everett Scott and Steve Garvey, two names you'd expect to see in the lineup day after day, but compared to Ripken, they fall way short. Combine their streaks and you're still 118 games behind Ripken. How about Miguel Tejada, whose streak from 2000 to 2007 was impressive, no doubt. But even if he doubled his total, he still wouldn't come close to Ripken. That just underscores how incredible this feat was. In fact, at one point in Ripken's streak, he played a mind-blowing 8,243 consecutive innings. Just let that sink in. Cal's inning streak started on June 5, 1982, and didn't end until September 14, 1987, when Ripken Sr. finally gave his son a breather during a blowout game against the Blue Jays. Surely, he would have played more if he wasn't taken out. To put this in better perspective, you should know that 2,632 games is more than all but 27 Hall of Fame players logged in their entire careers. It surpasses Babe Ruth's tally, excluding his pitching days. Plus, even legends like Rogers Hornsby, Mickey Mantle, and Mike Schmidt didn't come close. And get this straight, Kirby Puckett, a Hall of Famer in his own right, played his entire career within Ripken's streak. In fact, other notable players like Lenny Dykstra, Cecil Fielder, and Don Mattingly also fit their entire careers into Ripken's marathon run. Now, that's the kind of legacy Ripken left on the game, a streak that transcends generations. After so many stellar years, 1995 marked the year Ripken cemented his name in baseball history by breaking Lou Gehrig's consecutive game streak, a feat that earned him a spot among the 100 greatest baseball players by the Sporting News in 1999. Plus, elected to the Major League Baseball All-Century team in the same year, Ripken's contributions to the sport were undeniable. The Baltimore Orioles recognized his impact by retiring his uniform number 8 in 2001. No doubt, this legend's stellar career reached its pinnacle in 2007 when he was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame with a staggering 98.53% of the votes cast, which, by the way, is the highest percentage for a position player and third highest overall. And as if that's not enough, Ripken's induction ceremony alongside Tony Gwynn drew a record crowd of 75,000 people. But this legend's accolades don't stop there. He holds numerous records, including the most consecutive games played and the most consecutive innings played, both impressive feats that showcases his durability and commitment to the game. Moreover, as a shortstop, Ripken shattered expectations, setting records for home runs, double plays, and all-star game appearances. His impact on the Orioles franchise is equally remarkable, with records in games played, hits, runs, RBIs, and more. In the end, Cal's record-playing streak underscores the value he brought in coming to work every day and doing his job to the best of his ability. No doubt, it is unlikely we will ever see another player come close to his record.